Hi, kindergarten. Today we're reading chapter four in Sunset of the Sabretooth. I hope you're enjoying the book so far and I'm sure glad that we haven't met this character yet. Chapter four is called Cave Kids. Hmm. It's making me wonder if, am I thinking boys? If Jack and Annie are going to be the cave kids or if they're gonna meet some cave kids. Hmm, we'll see. Today we're gonna make inferences. We're gonna think about what does Jack know and what is he thinking? And what does Annie know and what is she thinking? And luckily Jack and Annie have the book to look at so they can learn a little bit more about the ice age and maybe that'll help them make some inferences too. Let's read to find out. I turn on my reading voice. I'm gonna get started. Chapter four, Cave Kids. Jack and Annie crept to the cave and peeked inside. Remember, this is a different cave. This one is glowing. A small flame danced from a bed of glowing coals. Near the fire were knives, axes, and hollowed out stones. Animal skins were neatly stacked against the wall. People must live here, said Annie. She's making an inference. She's thinking about what she sees and what she knows. She sees things that people have, like fire, knives, axes, animal skins, things people use. And she's making an inference that people must live in this cave, not just animals, people. Maybe it's the home of the Cro-Magnons we saw, said Jack, looking around. Let's go inside and get warm, said Annie. Jack and Annie moved quickly to the fire and warmed their hands. Let's pretend. Put your hands over the fire. Oh, I bet it feels good after being in all that ice. And they're wearing their swimsuits. Their shadows danced on the stone walls. Jack pulled out his Ice Age book. He found a picture of a cave and he read, Cro-Magnons made many things from animals, plants, and stone. They made flute-like musical instruments from mammoth bones. They made ropes by braiding plant fibers. They made axes and knives from stone. Sounds like they were pretty creative people. Jack pulled out his notebook and his pencil and he started a list. He wrote, Cro-Magnons made bone flutes, musical instruments made from bones, plant ropes, and stone axes and knives. Ta-da, said Annie. Jack looked up. Annie was wearing a coat. You see that big old coat? It had a hood and long sleeves. It went all the way down to her sneakers. Where did you get that, said Jack. From that pile of furry skins, said Annie, pointing. These must be their clothes. Maybe they're being mended. Do you know what that means, mended? If something gets mended, it means that it gets fixed. She picked up another coat and handed it to Jack. Try one, it's really warm. Jack put his backpack and towel down on the hard dirt floor. He slipped on the coat. There's how he looks. They look like cave kids, don't they? There's that warm fire. It did feel very warm and soft. We look like cave kids, said Annie. Squeak. Who is it? <laughs> Peanut peeked out of Jack's pack lying on the floor. You stay in there, said Annie. There's no teeny coat for you. Oh, wouldn't that be so cute though if there was a coat for Peanut? Peanut vanished into the pack. I wonder how they made these coats, said Jack. He turned the pages in the book until he found a picture of Cro a Cro-Magnum woman sewing. He read, Cro-Magnons scraped reindeer skins with flint rocks to make them soft. They used bone needles to sew the skins together for clothing. Jack added to his list, reindeer skin clothes. So they made their clothes out of the skin of reindeer. I hope the cave people won't mind if we borrow their coats, said Jack. Hmm, maybe we should give them our towels, said Annie, to thank them. Good idea. And my goggles too, said Annie. They left their gifts on top of the rest of the animal skins. So Jack and Annie know that the cave belongs to who? Or who do they think it belongs to? They don't know, but who do they think it belongs to? 
they think it belongs to the cave people, the Cro-Magnons. So what do you think they're thinking? They said they took the cave people's coats and now what are they leaving behind? They're leaving behind what they had, their goggles and their towels. So are they thinking that they should be nice to the cave people and give them something in return so that they're not just taking what the cave people have? Yeah, I'm making an inference about the story. I think Jack and Annie are thinking that we should leave something in return if we're gonna take something, otherwise we're just stealing something from someone. So let's leave something so that it's fair. Making an inference there. They left their gifts on top of the animal skins. Let's explore the cave before they come home, said Jack. It's too dark in the back, said Annie. We won't be able to see anything. I'll find out how cro Magnon saw in the dark, said Jack. He opened the Ice Age book. He found a picture of cave people holding odd looking lamps. He read aloud to Annie. cro Magnons made stone lamps. They hollowed out a rock filled with animal fat, then burned a wick made from moss. There, said Annie. She pointed to two stones near the fire. In the hollow of each was white, gooey stuff and a big pile of moss. Moss is like a plant. We have to be careful, said Jack. He picked up one stone. It was smaller than a soup bowl, but much heavier. Can you kind of visualize that and feel that? It's a stone, it kind of looks like a bowl. It's pretty small, but it's heavy. So how would it look when you were carrying it? Kind of heavy, right? Jack held the stone close to the fire and lit a, pe a piece of moss. He lit another lamp and gave it to Annie. Carry it with two hands, he said. Okay, I'm gonna make another inference. I'm gonna stop and use my thinking voice for a second. So I know that Jack and Annie want to explore the cave. They've said that they wanna go and see what's in the back of the cave, but the problem is that it's too dark. So what's the solution that they found for that problem? How are they going to see in the dark? So they made themselves little lamps where they can go and see in the dark. So it makes me think that maybe Jack and Annie are kind, kind of trying to act like the cave people. They're trying to wear things the cave people wore and use things the cave people use so that they can survive in the Ice Age too and that they're able to explore. That's what I think that they're thinking about. They're trying to be more like cave people. Let me find my place in the book. <laughs> Carry it with two hands, he said. I know, she said. Jack tucked the book under his arm. He and Annie carried their stone lamps to the back of the cave. Hey, I wonder where this goes, said Annie. She held her lamp up to an opening in the wall. I'll check the book, said Jack. He put down his lamp and flipped through the Ice Age book. I think it's a tunnel, he said. Be right back. This is reminding me of the night at dawn when they went through a tunnel in the castle. Wait a second, said Jack. Too late. She had squeezed into the opening and was gone. Oh, brother, said Jack, sighing. He closed his book and peeked out into the opening. Come back here, he said. No, you come here, said Annie. Her voice sounded far away. You won't believe this. Jack picked up his lamp and book. He ducked into the small tunnel. Wow, came Annie's voice. Jack could see her lamp flickering at the other end. Crouching down, he hurried toward her. At the end of the tunnel was a huge cavern with a high ceiling. Annie held her lamp close to the wall. Look, she said. Her voice echoed. Animals were painted on the wall in strokes of red and black and yellow. There were cave bears and lions elk and reindeer, bison and woolly rhinos and mammoths. In the flickering light, the prehistoric beasts looked alive. And that's the end of the chapter. And I had to visualize at the end, there's no picture. So I had to visualize what that looked like. They were holding their lamps up to the wall. And what do they see painted all over the cave walls? All these different animals prehistoric animals like woolly mammoths, woolly rhinos, like the ones that we learned about when we were learning about the Ice Age. 
So for my picture, I just had to visualize and draw what I visualized because there was no picture from the book. I had to use what the author said. So here are some pictures of different prehistoric animals. And then Jack and Annie went through this tunnel into the cave and they're both wearing those long coats now that they borrowed from the cave people. And this is my story timeline card for chapter four. I hope that you guys enjoyed this chapter. We're gonna think about what's gonna happen next. Are they going to run into any people inside the cave? What do you think they're gonna see on these cave walls that might be interesting? And then tomorrow we'll read more to find out.